Uh, hello, sir. Is it better now? I have changed the position. Live is on. Please be on mute. Today, in the media conference with Lal Goyal, which is brought to you by V4 News, Global TV, V4 Stream, Manladu TV, News Gaon Se, Sambhaz Sarokar News, Organ Donation India Foundation and Gyan, our endeavor is to enlighten you with the current topic. And today's our topic is role of youth in leadership. Leadership is not about a title or a designation. It's about impact and influence and inspiration. Leadership is about vision and responsibility, not power. Youth leadership opportunities are often overlooked by adults, either knowingly or unknowingly, but the results are the same, a lost opportunity for young people to take the lead. Even when adults consider themselves champions for youth in leadership roles, many times adults are asked to assume the leadership positions instead of letting youth take the lead. Youth are the most important and dynamic segment of the population in any country. It is believed that developing countries with large youth population could see tremendous growth provided they invest in young people's education, health and protect and guarantee their rights. We can undoubtedly say that today's young are tomorrow's innovator, creators, builders and leaders, but they need the required support in terms of good health, education, training and opportunities to transform the future. The economic trigger happens when a country is more hands to work available than more mouths to feed. To put it simply, working age population has to be larger than the dependent population. Today, India is one of the youngest nations in the world with 65% of its population are youth up to 45 years. It is further estimated that the average age of the population in India by 2030 will be 29 years as against 40 years in USA, 46 years in Europe and 47 years in Japan. This gives us the edge of demographic dividend over other countries. The youth of today is increasingly becoming restless and is struggling to remove the dispatches. However, more efforts need to be put in if we are to become free from the vicious circle of poverty, malnutrition, corruption, violence, and unemployment. All these vices are still prevalent in the society, which are not allowing our great nation to function in its real spirit. Unfortunately, being a democratic nation and largest democracy in the world, India is still lagging behind in achieving socio-political and economic equalities which were dreamt by our predecessors. As a nation, since 73 years, we have been striving to eliminate these inequalities at all levels, which are existing in the forms of poverty, unemployment, illiteracy, corruption, violence, gender bias, etc. India is ranked at 113 Human Development Index, 115 in Human Capital Index, 100 in Global Hunger Index, 122 in World Happiness Index, 62 in Inclusive Development Index, 141 in Gender Development Index, and 145 in Global Burden of Disease Index Study. India's rank in various development indices has barely grown over the years. If India is to improve upon these indices, then the Indian youth needs to take the charge and come forward to fight against multiple inequalities and contribute in nation building. The pivotal role of youth are afresh with ideas and not ideals, will help in this movement towards a transparent civil society structure, which can influence the political administration for the benefit of the society. 
it is only through a strong system of representation that democracy work and it is only through a strong youth representation that the dynamics and vigor of the country be maintained it is therefore important to acknowledge the role of civil societies in empowering youth towards strengthening of the democratic system of the country and sustainable development the solution lies to effectively utilize modern tools in disseminating the belief among youth on their participation and representation in democracy through civil society initiatives our nation needs them to resolve most of our problems currently india is facing a lot of challenges and youth are capable of solving them they just need to be given a chance to prove themselves youth have the power to unite individuals in the various ethnic groups racism is on an ongoing issue around the world individuals are fighting against each other because of the complexions of their skin and the texture of their hair religion is another issue the youths can convince their fellow men to live in peace and love all of us are one and we should not allow these little differences to push us away from each other there are also a lot of crime taking place women are being killed by their abusive husbands persons homes businesses are being broken into all of this crime and violence needs to stop the youth once more has the ability to bring about a change in the country youth leadership supports youth in developing the ability to analyze their own strengths and weaknesses set personal and professional goals and have the self esteem confidence motivation and ability to carry them out through leadership development centers can mentor guide and train youth to become dynamic advocates managers and participants in projects providing leadership training prepares youth to manage time work in a team settings set goals start conversations fa facilitate meetings and make effective presentations all of which are positive life skills that they will carry into adulthood youth leaders who can motivate their peers and lead by example will make the youth group stronger and more effective however these leaders will not come out of the wood work young people become effective leaders when services the provision of resources knowledge and goods for youth and supports like interpersonal relationships are in place to foster opportunities the activities roles and responsibilities done by youth think of every young person as someone who possesses leadership potential not everyone feels comfortable leading a meeting or speaking at an event but they may be able to talk to teachers about a project or draft a letter to a school or community newspaper it is worthwhile to think about all the ways youth can get involved the nation the notion that maturity comes with age has long been a reason for leadership attainment in societies take ancient times as a prime example leadership roles were divided based on age where the elderly were naturally considered leaders in their places of dominion but that has all changed with time in the current generation youth are trying to take on leadership roles that were previously reserved for seniors a move that hasn't been received in the most positive of light by the elderly despite all the struggles the youth are encouraged to engage in leadership positions in order to represent their demography but also to ensure that they are nurturing themselves into great future leaders youth leadership is the practice of teens exercising authority over themselves or others youth leadership has been embodied elaborated upon as a theory of youth development in which young people gain skills and knowledge necessary to lead civic engagement education reform and community organizing activities countless programs around the world seek to teach young people particular skill associated with leadership particularly those programs associate with youth voice or youth empowerment it is based on the study that it should strengthen individual and community capacity 
and to discuss today's very, very important topic, the role of youth in leadership. We have seven youth with us and we have our chief guest. And I would like to invite and introduce our chief guest of today's, Mr. Uh, he's none other than Mr. D. Shivanand IPS. Mr. D. Shivanand IPS is the former Director General of Police Maharashtra. He belongs to 1976 batch. He served as Police Commissioner Nagpur, Thane and Mumbai. Now running an NGO called Roti Bank at Mumbai, Nagpur and Coimchur. Roti Bank served 1 million meals in 2018, 19 and 3 million plus meals from January to July 2020. Afterwards, they are serving day and night. Uh, during even the COVID time, in the pandemic time, they have not stopped their work. And they were one of the main reasons when the migrants' problem was there in Mumbai. They were the main agency who served the meals to all those poor, needy persons who were running at that time, leaving the Mumbai city and the Roti Bank was in the front line to serve the meals. And their motto is uh, to remove the hunger from the earth. So he's doing a, such a noble job. I would like to invite him, uh, Mr. D. Shivanand, then IPS, the former Director General of Police, Maharashtra. Mr. D. Shivanand, please, on role of youth in leadership. Yes, please. Yes. And now you can hear me. Thank you so much, Mr. Goyal. Uh, you have been wonderful. You have covered everything that way, whatever one could uh, uh, think about this topic. And uh, your speech has been more inspiring to me. Than I don't know whether the others. Uh, uh, give me some time for setting up my, uh, my, 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 my program. Uh, you have really spoken very well. You've taken the wind out of everybody's uh, mind. One minute. I am little struggling with uh, my computer. The age. I, uh, I, I'm no more a youth. As, uh, as the... Yeah, yeah. That, that is why, because uh, youth are <laughs> leadership has to be given to youth. Yes. yes please. Now, can, can anybody see? Uh, everybody see this? No, right now, no. It's You have to share the screen. Yeah, I did share. I did share. I am receiving the incoming video call from you, not the uh, screen. No, no. I think, I think yes, I am receiving the incoming video call on my mobile. I think uh, you have to share uh, the button. One minute. I'm not able to, I'm not able to do that. Uh, can uh, your people help? Uh, uh, okay, no, actually they are, they will not be because they are on that. I will just see. Uh, you have the share the screen button in front of you. Yeah, I'm trying to get that. In but... that, in that, uh, you have to, uh, where your file is there, you have to click that first. No, file has come on my screen. One minute. Are you on your screen that you have to click first? Yeah, but I'm not able to do that. Because if you click that, no, 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 nothing is happening. Uh, my, my scrolling thing is also not happening. Something wrong. No, you see, uh, I, I will, I may gu guide you if, uh, if just no, that, try that once more. is not coming. You see, that, is... there is a down below. There is a button on a laptop and share screen in the green, green, this thing. It is written I did on the down right. below. Once you yeah. bring one, your screen. One, I, I, I press that. Ha, then yes. You, then, you got, then you got the uh, screen share. in front of you. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It's yes. come now? Yes, yes, it has, has come. It come? Uh, yes, yes. Now I, I think yes. I need a little guidance, right? Yes, now it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, where is this? I want to bring it on the... Bring it. Ah, now we got it. Okay. Yes, please. Now, now, uh, now I, uh, I, I'll start. Uh, Twenty minutes from now. Okay. Yes, is that is yes. that fine? Yes, uh, please. Yeah. Twenty minutes from now, I'll set my uh, watch uh, so that uh, I will not um, stop watch. Uh, yes, yeah, start. Twenty minutes from now. Thank you so much. 
Mr. La, Mr. Lal Goyal has spoken to uh, uh, you all about uh, what you should know about the role of youth. He has given every possible statistics and he has covered this whole subject. There's nothing left for me to speak anything about it. But I would like to say that the youngsters should know all the statistics he gave. 100, 141, India standing in the world. It is all on the negative side. Number one is supposed to be the, uh, the first one. That is Singapore or maybe Switzerland or some other country. In hunger index, if you are 119, then we are, uh, we, we are worse. 179 countries and we are worse. 200 million Indians are going hungry today. And in pandemic, 800 million Indians are going hungry because of the unemployment and various other things. Mr. Goyal again said that we are the youngest country and in the year 2030 or 2050, we'll be 29 years old uh, as an average age. That's a fantastic demographic uh, dividend, as he said. Then, then how, what are we doing about it? How many of these young people are educated, employed or employable? Our education system doesn't make people employable. Uh, any BCom graduate or a BA graduate or anybody, what job, what kind of job you can do? I studied MA economics and there was so much of unemployment at that time and I became a professor and later the only job I could do was the UPSC exam. In the first time I cleared the UPSC uh, and IPS I got, I joined and I made a great name for myself. But the point is, what is the job an MA economics man can do besides teaching? If at all he is taken there. Otherwise, there is no job available at all. You are not qualified to do a job. So now you want to become leaders. How do you become leaders is what I'm going to talk about in the next uh, 20 minutes. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, the younger people, I wish them all uh, luck. They are all watching very keenly. Uh, as he said, I worked in the IPS. I worked uh, six years as commissioner, six years in the crime branch of Mumbai, where there is a trouble now. That's again a, a leadership crisis. All of you, when you become leaders, you have to bring so much of honesty, integrity, and trustworthiness so that the police force becomes stopped. Today, the Mumbai police being the finest, there is a huge crisis going on because of the leadership crisis. So if you become that position, you get into that position, what will you bring on the table? What is expected of you is honesty, integrity with immediate decision-making power. That is what you needed. And where we are lacking today is complete honesty. We are zero in honesty. And that is why Mumbai police is taking a solid beating as far as the image is concerned. Now this is my presentation. I thought I'll make a small presentation for all of you so that you will remember some pictures at least. So this is it. Life is not about finding yourself. In the sense, you just become a postgraduate, M-Tech, B-Tech, IIT, IIM. You don't become a leader. It is about creating yourself as a leader. You don't become an Indra Nui or a Sundar Pichai or a, 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 a Michelangelo or a Leonardo da Vinci in one day. You have to work hard. You know, you have to reach the place by working very, very hard. And that is about mind control. If you can imagine how I would have looked at a young age, I would have looked like this. And But then later, I became IPS, I became a professor and all that. I uh, looked like this and I wielded enormous power. Even after 10 years of uh, um, retirement, even today, I wield enormous power because of my work and uh, uh, other things. Success for the young leaders whom uh, Mr. Goyal described very elaborately is not going to come uh, uh, just like that. It is not like you are walking on the road and one day an elephant came with a garland and put it around your neck and you become the CEO of TCS or Infosys or anything like that. No, not at all. You have to join as a trainee and work very hard, prove your integrity and uh, uh, decision-making power, and then slowly work your way up. For example, Tata's uh, chief, uh, Chandrasekharan, uh, he's a close friend of mine. I'm working for them uh, the last 10 years. Now, suddenly, he didn't become a uh, replace uh, R&T. That is Ratan Tata. He worked very hard and proved himself every day, every uh, year. That is how he is there. So you have to fight it out of your mind and you have to create success. Success doesn't come to you like that. Some people die at the age of 75 and they go about dragging themselves until 75. Those 50 years are the wasted years and that's the year where you years, that is the time where you have to show your leadership and to be successful, your focus has to be so intense that others think you are crazy. 
If you are a normal human being, if you are not a crazy person on your focus, you are going to die as somebody very, very small at a small level. And uh, and and uh, success is nothing more than a few simple disciplines uh, practiced every day and follow, focus, 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 focus. And the distance between dreams and reality is called action. That is what Dr. Abdul Kalam would say. Who is the leader? Now, I'm, since you are all young people, I'm giving you a choice. Who would you like to become? Would you like to become Bhagat Singh? Would you like to become Kamaraj Nadar? Or you will become Winston Churchill or doc the great Dr. Ambedkar, John F. Kennedy or Mandela? All these choices are there. You can pick and choose and become what you want. And but then the availability of the internet web and various other things is giving you fabulous choices to become to get role models. So I would like to give these seven people and the others watching through the YouTube and other things. There are only seven simple words you have to learn to become a very successful leader and a role model yourself so that the others can follow you. First is vision. Have a great vision about yourself that I will become uh, like, uh, uh, let us say, Mr. Narendra Modi. Uh, you have the other example of a Sion who is a princely family and he is there. He is inherited everything, but there is nothing. No, no, no leadership quality. These seven things are missing in him. And so he is not getting into anywhere. I'm talking about Rahul Gandhi. I have not uh, uh, any political affiliation, but I'm giving you an example. But look at Mr. Narendra Modi. He was allegedly selling chai as a young man, not a much of a formal education. And what a great man he has become. 10 years as the chief minister of Gujarat, and he brought the Gujarat model. Seven years he's working as the PM, and he has become a world level statesman. Rubbing shoulders with Vladimir Putin or Joe Biden or Donald Trump, or whoever, the my high and mighty of the world is coming to him. And whenever he invites them, he comes there and he entertains them and he talks to them and become a statesman. So you have a great vision like that. If those people can become, why not you? Second is great passion about doing, bringing about uh, reality, uh, bringing about uh, the, the vision as success is passion. That is your focus, your attention, your uh, ability to concentrate has to be so passionate that 24 hours you immerse yourself and you become a Madame Curie or a Newton or a Socrates or a uh, Aristotle or even uh, Archimedes who ran out of his bathtub, Eureka, Eureka. He was focusing so much he didn't uh, even remember that he was wearing, not wearing clothes. Now third is the courage. Courage like Mahatma Gandhi to fight against the biggest British empire and drive them out. Chale jao, he said, and they had to go after uh, 1947. So that is the courage. Even today, emergency or today, if there is a sedition case or anything like that, can you fight it out? Can you stand there and say that this is what I stand? That's the courage and you have to fight it out. But no, Disha Ravi, I want to give example to all these seven people. Disha Ravi, how she fought it out. He said something and stood by that and got a court order, a stunning court order and came out. That is courage. I salute to these young people. Character is what we are missing. What is character? Honesty, integrity, trustworthiness, and all that kind of qualities will be uh, coming under character. And that is what, unfortunately, we are missing. Greed, lust, all these things have taken us down the line. And all our leaders, for example, Rajat Gupta, McKinsey chief, millions of dollars. But he was arrested for uh, insider trading. And he was there in the US jail and had to pay millions of dollars. And he had to come out of that. So one example I am giving. Then so many other people, I can say, for a lack of character, they have been caught and they have been dishonored, disrobed and dishonored. So character is what, young ladies and gentlemen, you should have. That is that honesty, integrity, trustworthiness, etc., etc., etc. The next one is self-belief. Do you believe that I am an Narendra Modi? Do you believe I am an Abdul Kalam material? Mr. Abdul Kalam was uh, allegedly distributing uh, newspapers as a young boy. I have met him multiple times. Whenever he came to Mumbai, he will meet me and speak to me in Tamil in front of all the crowd. Such a childlike personality. And he has become the missile man and the president and things like that. So that is the self-belief. Would you like to look at yourself and say that I am the hero? I would become the, I will set the whole world right. Whatever uh, flood or fury, I'm going to uh, set the world right. That is the self-image you should have. The next one is the competence. That what is competence? Qualification to run the system. Qualification to be the role model and the leader. 
that comes from your education and luckily you are all getting fantastic education but would you step out of that routine thing of becoming something uh, in a corporate like iit iim and all that would you something do something would you start a unicorn that is 100 billion dollar company in a short while a startup you fail 2000 people have failed uh, uh, 98% of the people fail but winners are people who make unicorns in such a short time you would be the one who will believe and you will do that so that is competence all about the last but not the least is about discipline discipline is nothing but perseverance and staying back in the arena when everything is going wrong when people are challenging when they are talking to you all negative things that you can't do that staying in that arena and putting up a fantastic fight morally superior fight that is is discipline you should have that so ladies and gentlemen when you get into leadership position these are the qualities you have you will, will help which will help you to become an excellent leader fantastic communication again i will say mr narendra modi continuous communication that the, the, you know chai pe charcha uh, pariksha ke pe charcha election ke pe charcha what all he does you know so magician like he is like the pied piper taking everybody uh, down the line you know down the road i, I would say down the road of uh, excellence or path of excellence or success i will say tone setting in whatever you are doing and trying to achieve coaching others and getting a feedback managing yourself the family the work your personal habits getting into narcotics and uh, getting hauled by ncb or not like the sushant singh rajput case you saw all those youngsters getting hauled by the ncb that is self management and the decision making informed decision making that before you make a decision you have to completely have information and once you take a decision you stick to it and get it implemented the courage is what i spoke to you earlier risk taking and the change management is something which is as on today as on today very very important where what happened to those many many companies one simple mobile phone has replaced 30 instruments 30 instruments you can dictate you can send messages telegrams have gone the tapal has gone postal telegraph department has gone typing has gone you can voice uh, dictate you can uh, do everything like that so that is the change management you change and you manage and you become the leader and risk is there everywhere unless you take risk like becoming cp bombay is not a cake uh, walk it is not a crown of uh, roses it's a crown of thorns look at paramveer singh and vaze what all happened in the newspaper you will know it is not a manageable job like that as easy as you think next is relationships and power relationship with your own people relationship with your own subordinates the bosses and the power you exercise and how you empower yourself the next is innovation today is the day of innovation overnight industries can be wiped out what happened to kodak what happened to xerox what happened to so many other companies they don't exist anymore what happened to ownership of cars ola uber came you don't have to have a driver and you don't have a car you just engage in a car in a, in a, in, a, in a thing like that and you don't have to own houses also oyo and various other things can give you houses and things like that so that is innovation and change planning you about your life about your leadership and about vision is a continuous process keep changing the uh, i mean uh, goal post not towards backward but towards forward uh, uh, post for example you have climbed one 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 uh, 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 everest you look for the bigger everest and start climbing that that is what i mean by saying uh, planning and vision and setting new goals to achieve and i, I mentioned about communication and all that with that one thing. I recently read a book I thought I will tell you all this uh, smart people it is a book by James Collins top 5 level leadership and he mentions that 1465 uh, CEOs the top level leaders like Indra Nooyi he interviewed and came to a conclusion they had these qualities that is excellent communication excellent awareness at what's happening in their company and in other companies and other places countries and other things and they had absolute honesty and integrity 
and their relationship was of very humble relationship they were very very humble in spite of achieving the best in the world and innovating continuously is one of the qualities they had and developing leadership skills in others not in themselves they are already leaders if you are an ias ips officer you are already a leader but you are a transactional leader how you convert yourself into a transformational leader where you go to a district and change the entire thing come to mumbai as a police commissioner and change the entire image of the police that is a transformational leader and that is what you are looking forward to the next police commissioner should have the transformational leadership skills and that is what i expect the youth who are listening to me to possess just being there drawing the monthly salary getting a pension and dying is not what you are meant for you are meant for creating uh, innovations you know innovatory skills you should show that the billion dollar companies are coming there so you can see leadership is not about size you don't need a gargantuan gigantic titanic figure to control this even a small child can drag this animal and it is about the knowledge and wisdom which you people first us in plenty believe believe self image will tell you that this is all about effective leadership i am giving you since you people are all studying maybe management and things like that i want to show you the choice of your role model i am not commenting any of them i am only offering a, a, a colorful array of leaders in commercial world and you can see what are the qualities they have which kind of a, a character you would like to pick up from them i of course there is no perfect human being and no perfect leader you have to pick and choose one 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 quality from each of them and that is it here is our uh, two more leaders and then i would like to advise that just don't just set goals and you have to go and hunt them and if it is not challenging you it will never change you if it is routine catching bus number 279 and going to mantralai and doing plodding throughout the day and going back home by catching a fast train is just not there it has to challenge and you have to become a leader my advice to the youth the ones who want to become leaders is satsang sit with the winners if you sit with the losers you will be talking about who is sleeping with whom and who has run away with whom who is taking narcotics and where do you get uh, drugs and things like that no sit with winners the talking the topic will become about concepts about ideas about innovation about change so selection of your friends has to be very very carefully done if you have a group of friends who are influencers and winners your life will go on a roll it becomes a roller coaster ride moral superiority is the only superiority and you can't uh, command your force or your people or anything unless morally superior so that's what happens in the army that's what happens in the police that's what happens in the ias or anything like that ladies and gentlemen and my dear young friends you earn any amount of mal mal wealth and later if you lose your health all that becomes zero if health is one and wealth is zero any number of zeros you add and one falls down and other things become zero so that is the problem so maintain your fantastic health build up your team and work as a team take risk after being informed about all the consequences and also motivate others and have self confidence and have be a good communicator never give up give up under adverse conditions don't suffer from greed all of us have greed enough is enough one house one car one uh, system that's what we require maybe one wife one husband for all of us we don't need more than that to lead a comfortable happy life and greed has to be controlled and the, the, the then mind has to be controlled i mentioned earlier mind is a good servant and mind is not a good master so make your mind a servant and then you be the powerful win in your mind and you will win in your reality win in your mind and you will work as much as you can want to achieve so that is the Uh, the hardest person to escape is from your mind mind which shackles you from growth so control your mind win your mind he mentioned about bruce lee you know here it is bruce lee he had 2 inches less of one leg and that's a great disadvantage for a man like him but he said hell with the circumstances i create opportunities and he became the legend the greatest one if i were him in his places i would have become a zero i would have been a nothing 
I would have been doing nothing, good for nothing. But here, he created a legend around himself by converting his um, uh, misfortune into a great opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, knowledge is free and you only pay for your ignorance. Ikigai is the reason for which you run. This is my Ikigai. Mr. Goyal mentioned about it. Feeding about 10,000 people a day. Now the demand is increasing. It is increasing because of the second pandemic. Last year, we served 4.6 million meals, Mr. Goyal. 46 lakhs of meals. This year, already 10,000 into the number of days we spent. Now we'll be doing 20,000 meals. Here are the children, the future leaders of country. I'm feeding them. I'm giving them help so that they could come up. And this is the Roti Bank, which he mentioned. With this, my 20 minutes is over. Thank you so much. And thank you, Mr. Goyal, for giving me this opportunity to interact with the most brilliant minds which are sitting and watching me. I am too very happy to listen to them and find out what kind of stuff they are made of. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Shivanandan, for giving such a inspirational, motivational uh, talk. I, uh, to be very frank, you are saying that I have no, I have, I stand nowhere. What you have mentioned, it's really eye opener, even for the senior citizens like me. Uh, youth, definitely today's talk, what you have given is really a, a very, very, very inspirational, very motivational and to the point. And I, I would like to inform all the viewers as well as the youth. I spoke to Mr. Shivanand only two days back and just see his commitment. He has come, made a complete P, a PPT presentation only for this. This is called discipline. This is called innovation. This is called uh, motivation. And this is called the commitment. This is required in the leadership quality, which he is having. Such a, a person who holds so much a most powerful position without any blot on his career. Anyone, you can ask anyone and everybody gives re full respect to him even today. And in, uh, after retirement, he's doing such a social work. Just imagine 20,000 meals a day. It's not a joke, free of charge to, the, to those who are underprivileged. That is what is required. And there the leadership quality, what he has shown. Thank you very much, Mr. Shivanandan. Thank you, really, sir. it's a, a, when I chose you as a chief guest, somebody commented me, why a police officer, former, make it just listen to him and then I will talk to him. And I'm sure that today when I, I after my program, I will get a call and he will say, yes, your choice. Yeah. Was. <laughs> Thank you, sir. For the Thank next you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Now I would like to invite my first uh, youth guest and she is having a class. So she requested me and in, in any case, uh, she's number one in alphabetical order also. And she's Miss Anena Rawat. Miss Anena Rawat, please uh, uh, unmute yourself. Um, and uh, yes, uh, you have spoke. Uh, you have you have heard what our chief guest, Mr. Shivanandan, has spoken, and he gave all the things he has explained with the presentation. Also, now we would like to know from you role of youth in leadership, Miss Ananya Rawat, please. First of all, I would like to thank Mr. Lal Goel sir and his media house for letting me speak here. Before moving forward with my introduction, I would like to start with a small story. I was in my 10th grade when I was selected to be the head girl in my school. I thought it will be easy for me as I was a dominating one back in school. But the moment that badge was attached with my dress, loads of responsibilities came over my shoulder. That was the first time I experienced leadership. I felt so occupied with, my all, with all the work. Even when I just have to instruct people uh, okay. and distribute uh, uh, work among me, them. Excuse me, just introduce yourself first your name and your school and what, what you are doing. Okay, sir. Uh, so a very good a good morning to everyone. I am Ananya Rawat, an academic scholar at Multinational Business Academy. And today I am here to talk about the role of youth in leadership. So continuing my story uh, that I started feeling like whatever I do, problems keep following me always. I became really tense and eventually it became my daily routine. This was when one of my teacher observed that and called me to meet her. She told me that a great leader is not someone who solved everyone's problem, but the great leader is one who gives somebody else the capacity to solve their own problems by getting them to explore their own situation. 
that was the one of the most important lesson of my life from the story i started with leadership for me was never about leading a group of people or an organization for me it was about helping people grow on their own there's a saying give a man a fish and you need him feed him for a day teach a man to fish and you will feed him and his family for a lifetime i truly believe that this relates to leadership a leader might feel he or she is always surrounded with problems and questions but a true leader is the one who knows exactly when to actually solve one's problem and to when to just let them tackle it by themselves but where do the youth fits in here so the answer is the role of the youth is simply to renew refresh and reimagine youth have this power in them to to solve problems with a better solution there's this very trendy line modern problems need modern solutions youth have a role to renew and refresh the current status of the society including leadership innovation skills etc youth are expected to advance the current technology education politics and also peace of the country look at passionate young people from any era and you will find an impressive catalyst for change i remember a story where a jobless youth helped experienced and elder officers of delhi police crack a code and foil a terror attack of india at india gate not just this we have many other stories in the past where youth in leadership brought change youth develop positive relationships with adults and peers youth are physically and emotionally safe youth are actively engaged in their own development youth are considered participants rather than recipients in the learning process youth develop skills that help them succeed youth recognize understand and appreciate multiculturalism youth grow and contribute as active citizen through service and leadership lastly i would like to conclude my topic with the that youth leadership is highly important at this at it is demanded to lead the world because of the changing world the world is changing very fast the ch the change demands a changing leadership role typical leaders can hardly cope up with changes but youth leadership can as as they ha ha can easily bring dynamism to leadership innovation innovation is the is a must in changing world it is observed that the youth are the most innovative in leading courage leadership success lies in courage don't you think the youth holds the courage most inspiring the key of leadership is to keep people inspiring and who can inspire people most than youth dreamer leadership keeps people dreading a better future youth leaders can lead the out of the box dreaming so dear youth lead lead the world lead the change thank you thank you very much uh, ms rawat for giving your very powerful uh, uh, opinion about the youth leadership and give narrated your own story yes it is very much required if you will take all the problems on yourself you cannot be a successful leader if you want to be a successful leader you have to see that like our chief guest has mentioned about the team work that is a requirement of a, a true leader you have to be a leader so you have you require a proper team you have to divide your work so that they can handle those problems only very few problems which require your attention you can do thank you very much uh, ms rawat for giving your views now i would like to invite my next youth guest and she is ms anishka yadav uh, ms anishka yadav are you there yes oh ms anishka yadav um, have, yes mr anishka yadav you have heard our chief guest mr shivanandan as well as earlier youth guest now we would like to know from you the role of youth in leadership yes ms anishka yadav uh, good morning everyone i'm uh, i'm audible yeah, hello you are your voice is breaking just speak again uh, some you start i will uh, you introduce yourself please uh, good morning everyone my name is anishka yadav a student of no ms yadav I, 
sorry we can't hear you plus uh, your uh, net is weak i told you earlier also please shift somewhere i will take you again just go to some other place where the net is powerful i will take you uh, after i will be completing and then i will see i will take you don't worry plus plus please change the place uh, so now i would like to go to my next guest youth guest and he is mr bobby k john mr bobby k john you have heard our chief guest mr shivanandan as well as the earlier youth guest now we would like to know from you the role of youth in leadership mr bobby k john please hi um <clears throat> my name is bobby um i am i'm from kerala i work in bangalore in a company called citrix uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity here so years ago when i was a kid i saw an advertisement in doordarshan where there is heavy rain and then there is heavy traffic and there is a big wooden log that falls across the across the road and while everybody sits there and shouts at the the wooden log and the heavy traffic this a small school kid wearing a uniform he comes to the middle of the road he starts pushing the pushing the log nothing happens the log doesn't move while the log didn't move it moved the mindset of the people who are watching it there were people from around they came along with him they pushed the log the log moved the traffic got reinstated and, and the block was cleared so how did this small kid uh, become a leader even when he failed at doing what he was trying to do at the first place he was trying to move the log he, he he couldn't he failed but still he proved to be a leader um, who could guide others to do do something that that's better for everyone so just like what my predecessor told like what chuandans are told so it's it's not just about what you do has to end in a win or has to end in success what you do can pave path to others who follow you so if you want to see change you need the change you want to see something that's happening in the society it starts from you you start doing it you start doing it you be the role model and let people follow you don't be a leader because you are being asked to be a leader or don't have followers because they are asked to follow you be a leader because they want to follow you and they want to do what you are showing them and and what you are proving them with your life so if you have your morals you prove it with your own life you show it to others that hey i am doing this and that's how you prove others that how i can be a leader so in a world where people don't wear masks in a world where people don't social distance you be that person you be that person who wears mask everywhere you be that person who who has keep social distance everywhere a path that has been traveled the most does not mean it's a right path so like what you and us are told you bring out your own crazy ideas until your idea is crazy nobody is going to notice you so bring out that crazy idea in you and if you think you are doing it right you do it um let let me conclude it with a with a small cinematic story so there's a malayalam movie which which also talks about organ donation um it it's it's about um trans trans transporting a live heart from one hospital to the other hospital by road so while they try to achieve it uh, the police officer he looks at all the uh, all the challenges all the risks the traffic the school children uh, the the speed that the vehicle need to achieve he lists down everything and he he proves that hey due to these reasons i can't do it it's risky and i can't do it and i'm not going to do it and then there's a senior doctor who calls him up and says this hey if you say no today this day will pass on like every other day if you say yes this day will be marked in history this will motivate the future to say yes so in a world where people say no be that person who says yes thank you thank you very much uh, mr bobby and you have uh, narrated a, a story about the organ donation and you have said how the police officer once he said uh, yes that has changed the world yes or as he, mr bobby has mentioned i will just mention one thing in organ donation more than 5 lakhs people are dying every year far more than the covid death but uh, there and th this covid is also in our hand we can also save ourselves as mr bobby has mentioned wearing the mask so keeping social distancing uh, keeping hand sanitization etc but organ donation 
if we will do that is also in our hand to save those five lakhs people if we pledge to donate our organs so that those those who require organs can get those organs because once a person is brain dead the organs becomes useless and those organs can save the lives so what mr bobby has said yes one has to become leader and even as a small incident can show the leadership quality and thanks to the doctor also that how he has although it was a movie but yes it is something which is an eye opener and everyone can follow thank you very much uh, mr bobby now i would like to go to my next youth guest and uh, she is miss juby george miss juby george you uh, Ms. Jubi George, yes, uh, yes, you have heard of our chief guest, Mr. Shivanandan, as well as the earlier youth guest. Now we would like to know from you the role of youth in leadership. Ms. Jubi George, please first introduce yourself and then you can speak. Okay, sir. Hi all, I am Jubi George and I am from Kerala, uh, and personally, I'm a research scholar. Am I audible? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Okay, uh, I am a research scholar in English language and literature. Uh, from MG University, Kerala itself. So, first of all, thank you, Lal Kohl sir, and the organizers for inviting me for this, and also inviting me to deliver a very short speech on the role of youth in leadership. So, let me uh, start my small presentation. Anyway, so I there is a seventeen-year-old girl, Swedish girl, and she has given a word. Let me uh, start my topic. my talk uh, by quoting her she has said i have learned you are never small to make a difference and this words come from a 17 year old swedish girl who has given her speech at the un summit for climate change and it is greta thunberg and see how beautifully how meticulously she has put the words that she has said you are never young you are never too small that you can make a difference in this world so uh, first of all let's discuss why we need why what is exactly the purpose of leadership skills so leadership uh, roles it give you opportunity to develop skills it also gives you uh, to hold positions to lead a team you know and why should uh, we uh, develop skills or to hold positions or to lead a team you know this society has invested so much upon us in the form of monetary investment as well as in the form of education so much as upon us as when we were kids or when we were to end just because we have to give this back to the society we have to develop the society we are living in and you know when any people they are given the right guidance and when they are empowered with the knowledge of uh they are leadership skills as well as then uh, when they are equipped with the knowledge of their rights they can do wonderful well in their life they can be the change makers they can be the innovators uh they can be the best communicators and here i like to uh, focus on the four areas that the change makers do you know of a girl of a uh, young 16 year old girl and her name is autumn patia and she is from uh, an indigenous community of canada and you know why i have mentioned of this young girl just because she is known as the water warrior and you know she acted as a change maker in our community she fought for her water right and her indigenous right for the first nation community in canada and she was selected as a and change maker for the 2020 un list and do you know why how she has developed this because she has taken the courage she has taken the risk and she has moved so, so forward and she acted as a change maker and also the second point is the to be a critical thinker whenever some policy or something that uh, comes or hit us we must really have to think critically if this is right or if this is has any contradiction or if this has any bias so that we can analyze it and it helps us to develop the society then comes the innovators i'll tell an example of four young engineers from kerala they have developed a robotic technology and it's bandit code and this innovation has helped the manhole workers it has uh, removed the ma uh, manual manhole workers and they have uh, in, uh, developed this engineering technologies uh, they have developed this robot so that it can remove the 
manual work. And this is how innovation work and develop society. It comes from four engineering students of Kerala. And also, last but not the least, let me tell you, we must be good communicators to the society. Let's, there are a million people who doesn't know that what policies are there, what scholarships are there. So that once we come to know, we can inform others. And this is how a small leadership quality works, that we are informing others, we are talking with others, we are communicating, communicating with others. And also, let me also give a brief, brief description of three areas which where the youth has also to look upon, to focus. The first one is sustainable development. This is for the future generation. And the UN has called that by 2030, we have to focus on sustainable development, but the young, uh, the youth, the people of the uh, young age, they are not much into it, but we really have to focus on it. Second is the politics. Politics is usually considered within, the word is considered with a negative connotation, but we really have to understand that it is politics and the government is for the welfare of the people. And also we have to count how many ministers we have as young people. Hmm? And last but not least, we have to think also about the area that is agriculture. Many a time saying people think that it is not a good term good field to invest upon or to work upon. But agriculture is what, uh, ours is basically agrarian society and we can work uh, well in agriculture. We can, uh, agriculture. We can bring change uh, to the innovation in agriculture as well. This makes our society lead. Uh, this makes, if youth takes this into consideration, we can bring a better world and a better future. Thank you all. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Joby George, for giving your views. And as you mentioned about the, uh, those young youth uh, environmentalists, uh, you have given the examples. I would also like to add one more uh, young youth uh, environmentalist from India. And she is Lissi Priya Kangjum, is a child environmentalist activist in, from India. She is one of the youngest climate activist globally and has addressed world leaders at the United Nations Climate Change Conference 2019 in Madrid and Spain, asking them to take immediate climate action. And she is only nine years old. And she started when she was seven years old. So one can see it's not that we also in India, you all have that leadership quality. Only thing is that you have to understand as our ch chief guest has mentioned that everyone have the quality. Only thing is that you have to understand, see inside, come and take those things. But only thing is no greed, do for the others, serve the others. Definitely you become the automatic the leader. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Joby George for giving your views. Now I would like to invite my next youth guest and she is uh, Ms. Sujata Kumari B. Ms. Sujata Kumari B, uh, yes. Uh, you have heard our chief guest, Mr. Shivanandan, as well as earlier youth guest. Now we would like to know from you the role of youth in leadership. Ms. Sujata Kumari B, please. Well, first of all, thank you, Goel, sir, for this amazing opportunity. It's my pleasure to be here. So my name is Sujata, and I'm currently working in one of the IT company in Bangalore. And I also, I'm also a public speaker, and I'm also a public uh, personality coach. And I train students in government schools, colleges, also in private schools and colleges. Also, I get into the orphanages, and I train students related to these topics. I also take upon a career orientation program sometimes to uh, understand and guide those students where to go in their future. So when I was in my school, a teacher came in the classroom and she asked everyone, what do you want to become in future? Everyone told, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an engineer, I want to be a lawyer. So when it was my turn, I told, I want to be a leader. And uh, everyone in the classroom, they started laughing. And I was thinking, did I tell something wrong that everyone started laughing at me? Like you told in the beginning, Goel, sir, that, you know, you don't need a designation or a title to be a leader. You just have to be a leader. You are already a leader. Uh, when you look at our parents, our mother, she is, she, uh, don't you think she's a leader? When you offer a small cup of uh, cupcake, uh, the last piece cupcake, and she still, she says, uh, she gives you a small lie, saying that, no, 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 I'm hung, I'm, uh, my tummy is full. Uh, you have that. She is, she is a giver, right? She is also a leader. So when it comes to leadership, as Bobby told, that leadership begins within. You got to be a leader first. You got to be, you got to lead yourself first. 
I came across this wonderful video on internet uh, where the lady says, I don't remember the name, but where the lady says that women are dependent when they are young, they are dependent on their father, their brother. And when they are growing, they are getting married, they are dependent on their husbands. And when they are growing old, they are dependent on their children. And also when it comes to men, not all, but few men are still dependent on the parents. So it is first our responsibility to be self-dependent first. We got to lead our life first. Then we got to lead uh, outside. That is more important. We'll have to bring changes. As Bobby told, we'll, we'll have to bring changes in ourselves first, right? So when it comes to youth, youth plays an important role in leadership. Because there are three generations. There are younger generation children. There are youth. There are senior citizens. When something we'll have to look up to, we'll look for a youth, right? So I have I have few uh, areas where I really wanted to put in, highlight these points. So when we are uh, no, in the office and we are traveling to our office, so everyone I see, uh, I, I travel by bus, I see one person in one car. So instead of that one person, gather a people, gather your peers, take, um, there, there are five seats in your car and take five members instead of five cars on the road one car will be traveling and you this way you can also reduce the pollution you can also reduce the traffic and that is how we'll have to take initiatives to reduce things to uh, you will have to take an initiatives right and the second thing is that um, when it comes to traffic there are people when there is a timer set there are people who breaks the traffic rule and go when you are going there are five more people will uh, follow you behind so you know you be a leader you teach people you tell people not to um, uh, fail that not do you know break the traffic rules and you be a leader you bring changes in yourself also there is one more thing i wanted to put upon that is when I was, uh, when I usually travel in the morning, so I see BBMP people in Bangalore, they start sweeping the roads and all in the morning by 5, 5.30, 6 o'clock. So I see that uh, in the morning, the roads will be very clean. And when I'm returning back from my home, the roads are the same. So it is important that we are educated. And if there are dustbins everywhere that, you know, you'll have to put your efforts, move forward two, three steps and put your put the things in the dustbin. Or else if you don't find a dustbin, put it in your pocket or put it in your bag. And the same way. So I would like to conclude uh, it by saying that if any parents are watching today, uh, it is your response. Please encourage your children to learn these skills, leadership skills, help, you know, encourage them to learn public speaking skills, personality development. If they are looking forward to initiative for the country, for the uh, society, encourage them. And we as a youth can make a lot of difference in the country. So uh, we as a youth can join our hands together and make a difference. Let's create more leaders out of us. Thank you, Goyal. Sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Sujata, for giving your views. Uh, uh, and uh, I would like to mention one thing you have mentioned about the uh, fast track roads that, uh, that so many, uh, one person is sitting in car. I would like to praise Mumbai police. Once upon a time, Mumbai police came out with a scheme that if there are four occupants in a car, they will be giving a fast track in Mumbai peak hours. And that was implemented. But again, thanks to our so-called politician or so-called rich rich pupil because they can't they cannot travel uh, with four other three four pupil they put a pressure and that and that was a such a novel scheme without paying anything extra you are reaching home uh, timely and then you definitely you would like to invite your friends or colleagues in a car and go now that is a, a good idea leadership idea but unfortunately we are in a democratic country where we have lots of pressure as i told you in the very beginning uh, so that's why otherwise this was this are the idea and, and other countries are following many countries have a simple thing if you are traveling with four people in your car you have to not pay anything but if you are traveling alone you have to pay uh, there are many countries are doing but in india it could not work because of lots of pressures thank you very much uh, ms sujata for giving your views now i would like to uh, uh, now i would like to invite uh, uh, ms swikriti uh, ms swikriti uh, um, uh, new, new uh, youth guest ms swikriti you have heard our chief guest uh, mr shivanandan as well as earlier youth guest now we would like to know from you the role of youth in leadership ms swikriti please uh, sure, sir. So before I begin, uh, I would like to quote uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt, who said that we cannot prepare for a future for our youth, but we can definitely prepare our youth for the future. Uh, 
With that, I'd like to begin. Thank you for the recognition, Mr. Goel, Mr. Paul, for inviting me, the Gyan Foundation, the Organ Power Donation Foundation, and the organizing team for bringing forth this matter to our attention and the nations and everyone who is watching this. And greetings, everyone, our very honorable chief guest, Mr. Uh, Shivanand, and the young speakers in the house and everyone else here. I am Sweetriti from Jagran Lake City University, pursuing BBLLB honors in the sixth semester. So I would first begin with, youth leadership is important for the future of the community and the country. Without youth leadership, there will never be the next leaders in line so that there will be no one to pass the torch of the community. When you are not preparing the next generation for this sort of opportunity or this position, there would be no one you can uh, pass on your legacy to. So start them by uh, them by youth, by letting the youth take their uh, own decisions by themselves, like what to eat, what to wear, what they want to do, not just this, but also guide them, guide them in the right way, guide them to make their priorities and guide them to make them a little more aware. It is always said, and as what uh, Mr. Lal will uh, rightfully said in the beginning of, uh, uh, during the introduction of the topic, that, uh, that maturity comes with age. And uh, this has been a reason for the longest time that leadership acquirement was done only by the older section of the society. And the youth was being neglected or was off the table when there was selection for any such leadership uh, roles. Take, uh, take an example, the ancient times, it, let, let us take that uh, as a prime uh, example. Like, or you can even look at the Indian joint families where the eldest was naturally considered as a leader or the head of the family. But why can't be, there be a position where anyone younger than him can take that position? It is just about the caliber. It is not about the age. But I see that there has been a change with time. In the current generation, youth are trying to take on leadership roles voluntarily. That was previously reserved for the senior sections of the society or the more matured ones. And But this move has not been very well received or positively received by the society at large. Unlike the initial times, leadership is not about glorious crowning acts like a king is being crowned and it is, uh, it is uh, brought into attention of the entire na nation that he is the leader, but rather keeping a team focused on a goal and motivated to do the best to achieve it, especially when the stakes are high. And these are the little things that it is not about you being crowned before 10 to 12 people. You can silently be a, a leader by motivating everyone you know your friends, your family, your younger siblings, even your parents or your elders to do what they can to uh, let them see through their caliber. Effective leadership is the underlying framework for others' success and being able to stand back and let them shine as future generations reap positive effects and the uh, uh, effects and benefits. Teaching this uh, to the society's youth is a fundamental part of ensuring positivity, success, and effective execution for the future. And maybe this is why I know why uh, Mr. Lal Gohal invited our chief guest, that is Mr. Shivanand. Because some way or the other, even though he's in the police force or he was in the police force previously, he's some way or the other silently doing that. He's preparing a team of leaders of his own, which is simply brilliant and, look up, uh, and worth looking up to. Youth leadership opportunities are often overlooked by uh, uh, adults, which was also again quoted by Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Lal during his the introduction of the speech. And I do understand the concern that there is existence of a very positive, uh, uh, incredible fear that we are young and we can make mistakes or may not understand the gravity of such a leadership position. But the results are same, a lost opportunity for the young people to take the lead. We understand that there is a fear, but it is worth this uh, worth a shot. Giving such position to the uh, uh, to the uh, youth, only then they will make mistakes and and uh, and uh, be better leaders in the future. So a tiny mistake in the first place is much better than bigger ones in future, and thus they can be more credible with their positions. Many. Uh, we should give young people a chance to realize their full potential. I'd like to quote what the legend uh, Ratan Tata said, also one of the people Dr. Sh uh, Mr. Shivanand portrayed in his uh, PPT that 
I do not take right decisions. I take decisions and make them right. And relating this with the topic we ha we have in hand today, there is always a chance of taking wrong decisions by the youth, or by anyone in that case. So. Uh, uh, in those leadership positions but it is worth a shot because there's always a chance of learning and creating better leaders for the future so let us all pledge today and by concluding this i would once again say so let us all pledge today to grow and help grow each other and have a better nation of full of leaders thank you thank you very much uh, ms sukriti and you rightly said that the crown whether the crown will come or not one should have the leadership quality we have seen how princess diana became a world leader not only british leader world leader although she was not crowned as a king queen but this is the quality anyone can become even in your family you might be third or fourth or fifth in your hierarchy but you can also do the work so the everyone if the elders will give you respect so respect is not that you have, it's not demanding you need not to demand respect will come up with yourself and you can become a leader but that quality the youth should have and which i am sure the you people are showing the which definitely when our chief guest will speak they will he will definitely mention about how you how the th things what you have mentioned now i would like to thank you very much ms vikriti now i would like to invite our next youth guest and she is ms Usha Yadav, Miss Usha Yadav, uh, you have heard our chief guest, Mr. Shivanandan, as well as earlier youth guests. Now we would like to know from you the role of youth in leadership. Miss Usha Yadav, please, please unmute. Good morning, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yeah. Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Okay. Good morning, Lal Gunal, sir. Good morning, our chief guest, and good morning, everyone presenting here. Today we are talking about the role of youth in leadership. There is a four first, 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 you of, first, actually, first, you introduce sorry, yourself. Yes. Sorry, sorry, sir. Sorry, 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 sir. No, I am no, Usha no. Yadav, BH second, BH second year student of BH second year student from Saraswati College, Ghaziabad, UP. Actually, uh, sir, I am also not well today. Okay. So there is a provider period of time where some youth are granted the opportunity to develop and gain. First hand experiences in leadership as they transition, where youth learn how to work with peer to apply their potential and transform creative ideas into concrete results. Youth leaders are often represented with a strong sense of credibility and knowledge and are able to show others how to remain confident out of time. Through so efficacious leadership, youth are able to open new doors and access one's fullest potential for not only themselves, but for those around them as well. Leadership is one of the key factors that differentiate an idea or potential from proper execution. Otherwise, these ideas and valuable potential go to the waste. And at last, the youth of today is the leader of tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Ms. Tushayadav. I we understand that you are not well. Please get well soon, fast. And because whenever you are coming on our program, what happens? This is not a good thing. <laughs> Show to a good physician. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Sushant. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Now I would like to invite uh, my next uh, youth guest, if our uh, net is okay, Ms. Anishka Yadav. Yes, you have. Mm -hmm. your yes, please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Am I ah, audible yes. now? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Sorry for that. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Anshika Yadav, and I would like to uh, thank Mr. Goel for giving me this opportunity. I am a student of PGDM first year of IIEBM Inter Business School, Pune, and I I am from Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. Also, I would like to thank Dr. Mohan Agarwal, the president of Indo Gulf Marketing Association, for giving me this wonderful wonderful opportunity of speaking in front of this media conference. Today, I will be sharing my views on the topic, role of youth in leadership. There are around 1.2 billion youth all over the world and 600 million youth in India. So we all can imagine how big impact the youth can, cre our youth can create if they want to do something good and out of the box. According to me, leadership includes everything ranging from the impact a person is creating or completing a task. Leadership is a skill which is sometimes inborn and sometimes it can be created through continuous learning. I would like to quote an example from the industry who has been great in his career. 
at a very young age. We all know Mr. Ritesh Agrawal, the founder of Oyo Rooms. He started his company at the age of 17 and next uh, a, a boy who was just 13 years old named Tilak Mehta. He was a student and he gave the idea of deliv online deliveries to the famous Mumbai Dabhawalas and made an app called Papers and Parcels. A Saharanpur girl named Harshita Arora, she developed an app called uh, Cryptocurrency Tracker and they all have done something good and they have some idea and implemented it well and have created an impact all over the society. We all think that we need an experience to be a good leader or there is a certain age we need we need to uh, we need to attain for leading and uh, leading and managing the work but if you have the spirit and you have the confidence with continuous learning behavior you can lead the work or lead the role you will be and you will shine out from the crowd at the young age we all can start learning and looking for opportunities also we can initiate different tasks and have a confidence and spirit of doing things regularly and lead a work for the betterment of society as well betterment of ourselves too. At a very young age, you, we all can start learning and looking for opportunities. We can initiate different kinds of acti activities and challenge ourselves on the daily basis to build ourselves. This will boost our leadership with building our confidence. Through social media, we can all talk about what things are going wrong or what went wrong with us and we can give, them, give others the learning so that they are not making the mistakes and repeating the mistakes which we have done. In my point of view, they also should share, share their failure stories with their success stories and also their never, uh, never giving up behavior. We, uh, we can volunteer in different types of NGOs and also do some uh, also do some charitable activities. We can teach the un underprivileged students. Uh, the smile on their faces will make our day, definitely. These are the, some of the small steps we can take every day to be a good leader and to be a good person in ourselves. And, uh, and we can think out of the box. Like, critical thinking is the tool which can make us think widely and uh, think more openly. We we should have a never-ending learning attitude. As a youth, we all should try to indulge ourselves in the good activities. These small steps will set an example for the others to follow the good path we are following. And we will be a leadership in all the ways. Leadership is not always about being the CEO or being at the top level management or being the top hierarchy. But it is the take is it is the small steps that we are taking every day and learning every day and making a big step tomorrow. Thank you. That is all from my side. Have a good day ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Miss Anishka Yadav. Finally, you could uh, express your views uh, because earlier it was a problem of the net. Thank you very much uh, for expressing views. Yes, you have rightly said anyone can become a leader. Everyone can become a leader, or, and it can be a, a small step, but it can become a big step once you will take the first step. Thank you very much, uh, Miss Yadav. Now I would like to go back to our chief guest. And uh, definitely now he has heard of our seven youths. So we would like to know from you, your, uh, your again, inspirational and motivational uh, concluding remark. Uh, Mr. Shivanandan, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to heartily congratulate each one of the participants like Anshika, Yadav, Ananya, Sujatha, and uh, Ju Jubi, Usha, Bobby, and all others. I would like to listen to them throughout the day, you know, for the next two, three, four days. They are bright, brilliant, young and energetic, and they got a spark. Fabulous collection of people you have brought them. I appreciate you and thank you for bringing, uh, putting up a star cast like this, you know. They are like a star cast, actually. Wonderful, wonderful. I enjoyed listening to them because it's all out of box thinking and they have been uh, working very, very hard. So I would like to uh, conclude this by saying uh, that is what is the time, 11.47. Okay, next three, four minutes is that uh, they mentioned about Greta uh, Thunberg. Yes, we had our own Disha Ravi 
And we also have this Malala Yousafzai in Pakistan. All of you would have heard about her. She got a Nobel Prize at the age of 17. And she is making a lot of impact about girls' education. And she was shot by the Taliban in Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan. And then she moved, over, moved out of Pakistan and made an impact. So this is the kind of young people who are, uh, uh, who are bringing spark all over the world. So I would like to, after having listened to fantastic things, like Bobby mentioned about a small boy moving the log, that's actually I studied as the George Washington in the war when he was going on a horseback, his men were not able to do and he got down and did and things like that. Oh, inspirational stories are uh, plenty. So you can uh, definitely uh, count all of them. I would like to say that having heard these brilliant people, I want you all people to think about what's happening on the corruption front and can we start a campaign? You Can you all become role models and leaders about rooting out corruption? Can we stop corruption at your own personal level? And what's happening about corruption and our country? Transparency International has rated us very low year after year. Internationally, we are known to be corrupt. The next one, is uh, education, illiteracy can be removed. Each one, teach one. Uh, Times of India started a campaign like that. So can we think about educating the U people who are absolutely illiterate? Then we can bring about hygiene. Can we bring about hygiene? Somebody mentioned about the uh, garbage. Can you put it in your pocket or in your bag and put it there? In Singapore, $1,000 is fined very simply if you throw any uh, uh, garbage there on the road. So we have to worry and teach hygiene to the children, particularly UP, Bihar, and various other places all over the country. I'm not even mentioning one state. Uh, hygiene is so very, very, very horrible. Can we uh, bring about change in that and the health and education of the uh, young people who are uh, not so well off like all of us? Uh, can we do something about that? The next one I would like to uh, 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 give a kind of a bit of a warning is this media and this social media and TV media and things like that. I want all of you to watch a program called Social Dilemma. It's a BBC documentary shown on the Netflix. Please see that how this media can be so negative, oh, so horrible, and it can take away and take you completely through the garden path. Kindly see a program called Social Dilemma in Netflix. It's a BBC documentary. The whole political scene, my dear young friends, uh, is completely vitiated. The parliament has more than 67% of the people are criminals, have their criminal background. So can you not bring about young people who are highly educated and morally superior like you? Can you not contest elections? Can you not become MLAs, MPs, or uh, become uh, UPSC um, uh, people who can become IAS, IPS, and bring about a change in the whole system? With that, I will say, don't fall prey to the negativity which is going around. The false narratives being given to you and you are all being, uh, uh, you know, this uh, intolerance and various other things happening in the country. Please don't fall uh, 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 prey to such kind of negativity. Jata Jata, you know, as I close, I would like to warn the youngsters that being a younger person today is a big challenge. So I would like to say that you should see that you are not a prey to that and also others don't fall prey to that. As a youth leaders, please beware and educate others about this uh, uh, poisonous media. Then falling prey to habits like drugs, alcohol, tobacco and that. Uruta Punjab is a movie which you would have seen. Drugs is a big menace in Mumbai, Delhi, Calcutta, Bangalore, all over the place, even villages. The rising number of accidents. Do you know every day 400 people die and 70% are youths? Without a helmet, you ride a motorcycle or two-wheeler and get killed. And your parents have produced them uh, with a lot of uh, penance and uh, expense. They bring them up with hope and you can't afford to lose them. 1,44,000 people die in a year in road accidents. Begging, children begging on the road. It's an organized crime. Can you all think about it? Don't do anything about it. Think about it. The next is hunger and poverty. I mentioned about Roti Bank. You can visit the uh, Roti Bank website called uh, uh, rotibankindia.org and see what can be done about it. It is growing in leaps and bounds from 200 million Indian uh, to 800 million Indian. But mind you, we are a rich country. We've got 97 million tons of grains in the gudong. But these 800 million people don't have the purchasing power. 
So don't go with the impression that we are a poor country. No, we are a rich country with poor people. They they don't have jobs and they don't have the purchasing power. So think about them also. The other one is depression. You are all bright spark, brilliant children. But I have seen thousands and thousands of children to the extent of uh, they going to the extent of committing suicide. What is the number? 2,58,000 people commit suicide in a year. This is not a COVID uh, death rate I am talking. It is much more than that. Can you kindly identify people who are on the verge of collapse? You know, Please help them if possible. The next is terrorism and insurgencies. Do you know about the Maoist attack which happened uh, five days before in Chhattisgarh? where 23 CRP men were ambushed and killed and their weapons have been taken away. And this is going on from 1972. You have to be aware about it. I'm not asking you to do anything more about it, but be aware about it. When I'm talking about that, I also want you to know about the radicalization which is going on at your age group. People being converted into jihadi terrorists. You think about that and you worry about it and also know about it and stay away. If you can help somebody to stay away, there is nothing like it. The last two issues I want to warn you about is the growing crime against women. In this time, 5,000% is the violence, uh, uh, domestic violence growth. That is women getting beaten up by uh, husbands and various others. And they can't go to police station because of the COVID issues and all that. You worry about that. The last piece of advice is the growing cyber crime particularly against women, cyber stalking and uh, morphing and we preparing videos, insulting, humiliating, the growing, all future crimes will be done through cyber only. So beware of that, be aware of that and use your passwords and other things and keep your personal property and uh, uh, in safety uh, in a bank locker or in a uh, insured place in your house. So with all this kind of a thing, I want to say being a young man today is a big challenge. These are all tantalizing things in front of you coming through these advertisements, Google, Alisa, Alisa, Alexa, and various other things are offering all these things to you. Beware of that. Don't fall prey to all these habits like alcohol, drugs, tobacco, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's a very dangerous world out there for you. When you are all talking about leadership and what can be done, there are lots and lots of youth who are dying and you are getting into trouble, who are going to jail. Their under trials are overflowing in all the jails. Much of them, many of them are youth. So we should worry about all these things and see that our country becomes great. Our future is in your hands. We are all, uh, I, I'm 70 plus. So my insurance is the youth of this country. And I would like the political arena where the criminals have infested the uh, political arena, would you please come there and join and clean up the whole thing? I would like to have uh, members of parliament and uh, uh, MLAs and others who are people like you, who are educated, highly educated, motivated, committed, non-corrupt. Then only this country is going to become a $5 trillion economy. Then only we'll become a super power in the world, in the true sense of the word. With this, I thank Mr. Lal Goyal for having this, uh, given this opportunity to interact with such brilliant people. Everyone spoke absolutely, uh, gold, golden words you have uh, uh, come up with, brilliant. I am inspired, I am motivated. You have become my role models. Thank you very much. Enjoy, thank, be safe, thank, be safe. Thank you very much, Mr. Shivanandan. And uh, very, again, very inspirational, guiding, motivational, uh, concluding remark which he has given. I'm sure all of our youths today who are who are either participating here or who are watching, even not only youths, I can say in the senior citizens like me and many more, I've been motivated today and got such a good uh, words from a, such a senior person like Mr. Shivanandan. And one, but only one point I would like to add, what he talks about the politics. I just want to give one figure. In 1952, our first parliament, when it was constituted, 26% of our MPs were below 45 years of age. The last parliament, 2019, which was constituted, only 12% MPs are below 45 percent age. Who is to blame? You, the youth. You are 65 percent population. Please go out, vote yourself. Contest, as our chief guest has, contest the election. 
come in the policy making then you can change real change and you can become the real leader thank you very much and today's program which has been live telecasted by v4 news global tv v4 stream news gaon se samvad sarokar news malnadu tv as well as was shown live on facebook and youtube and our endeavor is to bring to you every day new topic and tomorrow our topic is one nation one election and our guest panelist guest are dr cv anand bos ies one man expert commission on labor government of india mr sarvesh koshal ies former chief secretary government of punjab we have colonel s dini uh, he is retired contemporary writer now settled in kolam as well as we have uh, uh, mr rawat who was the uh, an is officer who was the former chief election commissioner government of india so thank you very much thank you very much uh, mr shivanandan for joining us and thank you all the youth leaders youth you are leaders now as mr shivanandan has mentioned that you all are leaders and all youths who are watching at our program and all the viewers thank you very much for such a enlightening a, i must say inspirational and motivational program and